Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? So the other day I was out in my daughter's Corolla and it threw a check engine light. So I scanned the code and it came up as a PO138. When you cross-reference that, uh, that code shows a fault with the oxygen sensor. It says Bank 1, Sensor 2. So if you're not familiar, so Bank 1, um, this vehicle only has Bank 1 because it's a four-cylinder. Uh, if it was a V6 or a V8, then it would have two banks because you would have three cylinders on one side, three on the other, or four and four. Uh, but when you have a four cylinder, it only has one bank, one exhaust. So um, sensor one would be the upstream sensor, which would be the one before the catalytic converter. And sensor two would be the one after the catalytic converter. So the, the O2 sensors are basically monitoring the exhaust gases coming out of the engine. So the one before the cat is reading the dirty air, the one after the cat is reading the filtered air after it's coming out of the converter. Um, so we have a code with that indicating that we have an issue with it and it's been giving me a little bit of a problem with rough idle. Um, so I'm hoping that this is going to take care of that because I've tried a couple other things already. I've taken off the throttle body, cleaned it out, and uh, replace the mass airflow sensor um, and those two things I'm sure helped a little bit but uh, there's still that uh, issue with the rough idle. So your pre-cat sensor is going to be down and back there. You're going to see the exhaust pipe coming off um, area but the uh, the front sensor is there. The, the rear sensor uh, is going to be behind it which we'll have to access from underneath. Now in order to get to it we have to take apart some of the interior because the sensor wire runs through the floor and back behind the center console. And let me show you where that's at. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is take off these trim pieces and this trim piece here, and the wire comes up through the floor, probably right around here, and runs up behind uh, and plugs into a connector over here. So let me get these trim pieces off, we'll pull the carpet back, and then we'll get a look at uh, what's going on underneath here. Those trim pieces just pop right out. That's not a big deal. Along with that one. And then we're just going to take the carpet and push that. Okay, now with the carpet peeled back, you can see the sensor wire coming through the floor here. It goes up and there's a connector right back here. So we're going to disconnect that and then we're going to pop this out the floor and push it through. Okay, so now that we've pushed that wire through the floor, uh, you can see it just dangling here. And we'll crawl up underneath and see where that uh, actually connects to the sensor. I believe the sensor is like a 7 8 um, wrench, so let's uh, grab a wrench and see if it fits. All right, so here you can see the uh, wire. Um, there's the hole in the floor that it came out of. There's a little retainer clip there. And then there's your sensor attached to the exhaust right there. Um, so we're going to try and get this off. Hopefully it doesn't give us a hard time. Sometimes they're in there pretty tight. Uh, luckily I don't need the special socket um, like you would on the front one because it's pretty exposed and you can just get a wrench right on there where the other one you actually need a, a special deep socket with a hole cut out of the side of it so you can just go over the wire with it. So let me, uh, let me pop that clip out and then see if uh, this thing is going to cooperate with us and come out easily. 
right, so what I did was I took the uh, wire and I ran it through the wrench like this. Got the connector taken off. Now there is a clip on here that you have to take off. This wire is wrapped around this clip like that. You untake the wire, pop the clip off. Okay, that exposes the sensor. Okay, so that is a 7 8 and we're going to hopefully get this thing loosened up. So let's see what happens. Alright, so I put it on there and just gave it a couple of light taps with a rubber mallet and now you can see it's coming right out. sensor so that wasn't too bad all right so we're gonna grab the new one and uh, we'll install it the reverse of what we just took it out all right so these sensors can get a little pricey um, from the dealer I think it was anywhere from 160 180 dollars something like that um, I was able to find this one online cheaper uh, it was on eBay and somebody had it still in the package so this is a 2009 Corolla s 1.6 liter um, this is the part number that you would need for your bank one sensor two okay so let's uh, see what we got here okay so this is still brand new in the package not opened um, it does have your new retaining clip has the, the grommet for the body and here is your brand new sensor all right so we're going to go underneath we're going to install that end first and then we'll feed it up through the hole plug it back in put the carpet back and then we'll check the computer make sure there's no codes left and hopefully that'll fix things. Alrighty, so that took all of two minutes to reinstall. I uh, basically screwed its uh, sensor in here by hand. I got a big adjustable wrench I put on there to tighten it down. Put the little uh, retainer clamp back on here, fed the wire through it. Put your um, little retainer there, secured that to the body. Ran this up through the hole in the floor, pulled the uh, boot through, and then make sure that's seated properly. All right, so with that part done, we're going to go back inside, plug the connector in, put the carpets back in, and we'll check the computer, make sure everything's clear, and I think we'll be good. Okay, so we have the grommet through the floor. That's all set. I'm going to take this connector and just plug this back in right over here. So you hear that connector click into place. You do not want that coming apart while you're driving around. All right. Let's tuck it back in like that. And then we'll take the carpet, fold this back under. Okay, the carpet's all set. We'll take this trim panel, put this back in there. And we'll take this trim panel, put this one back in here. Finally, the rocker panel. Okay, and that pretty much completes the installation. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'll get my scanner, I'll plug in just to make sure there's no codes in there, and we'll clear out anything if there is. All right, so on this Corolla, you have your hood release here, and right next to it is another cover. You pop that cover down, and that's your OBD2 port. Um, you're going to plug this right in here, and then it's going to start reading for you. I'm going to turn the key on. Let's power it up. All right, so now it's reading. Okay, we'll go to codes. And you can see we have no codes here. I did erase the codes. I don't know if you can see that, but it says no codes. Um, I did erase the codes the other day just to see if they would come back. Obviously, they didn't. So that's good. We're all set there. I'll put that back. And next step, we'll just start the car up. Make sure there is no check engine light on, which there shouldn't be because there is no codes. So let's see here. Okay, the only lights on is the door open light, the seatbelt light, and the brake because I have the emergency brake on right now because I'm on ramps. And we're running good. Smooth idle, we'll check engine light. So I'll take it for a little spin up the street and back. And if nothing happens, I think we're good to go. All right, so if your code happened to be bank one sensor one you would have to go under the hood here and let me see if I can focus in on where it is yeah, it's pretty hard to see but uh, it's, it's Right down in that area there, on the exhaust, you can see that metal can, that's your catalytic converter, and then the sensor is right there in front of it. Alright, so that was a little bit more difficult to get to, so like I say, she's running good. I'm going to take it for a little ride, see how she runs. Alright, so we're sitting here at a stop, uh, and the engine's purring nicely, so that's good. Alright, let's just go down the street a little bit, and see how she rides. summer night here. It's uh, June 30th. It's probably about 85 degrees, sunny. I think a ride down to the boat ramp here. I bet you there's a couple of people down here. It is a Friday night. Um, so it's not the weekend, but there's probably still somebody here. Yeah, we got a couple of people down here. There's the boat ramp. Down at the lake, real beautiful down here. Again, sitting here at idle, purring nicely. All right, guys. Well, I think that is going to conclude this video. Um, hopefully, that gets rid of my little sputtering issue that I've been having. So far, so good. We'll see. Uh, time will tell. But uh, if you get that code, a PO138, I believe it was, that is your downstream bank one sensor two, and pretty easy to replace. Probably take you half an hour or so. Um, just clear the code out, and you should be good to go. All right, guys. Um, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, a like, a share, tell all your friends, and subscribe if you haven't. All right. You guys have a great summer. I'll catch you on the next one.